Assalamualaikum and a very good day. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, in this video, I'd like to share with you guys one of my favorite topic to discuss, which is ikigai, and specifically this particular presentation is prepared for 2023. Okay, let's take a look at uh, what I have with me today. So how? has your 2023 been so far hopefully things are moving along great but if not doesn't matter it's still uh, early in the year uh, next question i would like to ask is how was 2022 for you all good all downs some ups some downs um, basically that's that's how life is sometimes throughout the year you have some plus points in certain area you have some down points in other areas it's okay that's normal for life how about 10 years ago 2012 if you remember uh, back in the day a lot of people would say that 2012 based on the mayan calendar some catastrophe would happen world is disaster and so on and so forth but still we managed to scrape through and we are here now so anything that you foresee as something as bad may not be as bad as you think and specifically in terms of this particular year was actually the year i left my full-time job to go into what people now call as gig economy. I turned from being a full-time employee into doing training as a full-time freelance trainer. So that was 2012. Did it kick off uh, with a good start? Not really, but you know, we, we, we survived. Uh, we continued our own path and Alhamdulillah, uh, we're doing okay. Now, next question. How was 2002 for you? Okay, some of you may say that, hey, I'm not born yet, or I'm still just a kid back then. Um, 2020, sorry, 2002 was actually the year I uh, was sent for on-job training to Japan. Um, after being employed for one year, they sent me back to Japan. And that is where I learned about Ikigai specifically um, through my experience dealing with one particular a Japanese senior, which I would like to introduce next, which is Mr. Oikawa. So this is the, the, the time in my life where I was sent to Japan to basically inherit um, the knowledge from Mr. Oikawa uh, to do my, my task. And basically he wanted to transfer um, his, his uh, knowledge and know-how uh, to us in Malaysia. So I was there for a couple of months, three months to be exact. I was supposed to be there for one year, but uh, budget constraints. I uh, was there for three months. And among the first few things that he mentioned to me was don't dream of going back home uh, at 5.30. You, you are here to learn. I'm going to teach you, even if it takes us staying all day at work. So something along, along that line. So he's a very strict, very, very uh, rough person. But towards the end, I realized he was doing that because he had one specific ikigai in his mind or in his heart basically was to transfer what he knew his experience gained over the years to a very young man from Malaysia at the age of about 24 back then uh, to be able to, to, to do this and ensure that what he has learned is being uh, carried out. So basically a uh, legacy. Okay, so that was the year 2002. We, we live somewhat like on a journey. Uh, we are put on this earth. We are not sure how long we will be alive. But basically, uh, there, there is a purpose. There is something that we need to do. There is a journey. There is a destination. There is there's, there's that path that we need to take. Now, going through a road trip, for example, of course, you will need a vehicle. Now, the vehicle alone is not enough. The vehicle needs to move. To move, it needs fuel. Without fuel, the vehicle cannot move. Now, the vehicle with a full tank must need a destination. Otherwise, it won't go anywhere. Uh, or, or let's say, for example, you don't have a destination, but you're moving. You will burn up all your fuel very quickly, and you won't get anywhere. So you need the fuel, and you need a destination. And of course, 
you need a plan on how to actually get there. So in essence, what I'm trying to say here is in life, moving through this journey, we need to have passion. We need to have a sense of purpose, that direction. And also we need to have a plan on how to go about our daily lives. So what is passion? Passion comes from a very simple, uh, I mean, I've, I, I, I tried to consider this, you know, looking back as an employee, um, how did I develop my passion in terms of what I'm doing now? How do I develop passion in other people? Did some digging, uh, tried to study a little bit and realized there's a simple formula uh, to this, which is passion comes from two important things. Okay, two important things. The first one is finding meaning. So if you know the meaning behind every single little task that you do, definitely uh, it will drive your passion. First is to find meaning. Number two is finding progress. Without progress, then you, you will start to think whether there's any, any reason to do all of this at all. So let's say for example, you have meaning, you have progress. You try something new, you, you, you understand that this particular task is very important, it is crucial, and then you see yourself progressing. Another popular Japanese word, Kaizen, continuous improvement. You do it once, you do it twice, you become better at it, you become um, you know, more fluent at it, you become uh, a bit more, uh, the, the prep work becomes a bit more easier, you start to see results and whatnot. So this too drives the fuel. But then there's one more thing that I think a lot of people uh, don't realize, which is you need to have the opportunity to at least start and try. Without that opportunity, even if you know the meaning, even if you feel that you may progress, but without the opportunity to start or try, you won't get passion. So um, similar to a fire, the fire triangle, some of you may be very familiar with this, uh, fire uh, if a fire breaks out, there's three elements that you need to be mindful of, which is oxygen, source of fuel, and heat. You take out any one of those uh, three elements, the fire would, would, would burn out, or, or basically would, 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 would not be there. Okay? So similar to passion, you take out any one of this, the passion dies. Next, let's talk about purpose. So now purpose is where Ikigai comes in. Now, ikigai is a Japanese word uh, that roughly translated to reason for being, self of purpose, sense of purpose, and so on and so forth. Iki means life or alive. Kai or gai here means the results of, the value, the, the, the reason behind it. So put together, it's an expression that the Japanese uses to uh, explain this, this feeling that you have towards a specific purpose, a reason to, to, to wake up every morning, to, to look forward to something. So that is Ikigai. So now, when, when we, we talk, talk about Ikigai, a lot of people tend to, to think about uh, the serving mindset. Who do we serve? Do we serve ourselves? Do we serve others? Or do we need to serve both? You see, life is all about balance. You need to not just think about yourself, then you become selfish. Or, or you cannot just be selfless and have no regards towards your own well-being. Uh, you just, you just uh, contribute to others. That, that does, is, is also not fulfilling. So the idea of Ikigai is to understand what kind of impact do you have for yourself and for others. So number one is impact. Number two, we take a look at what are you good at this is very common. If you if you ever come across Ikigai, you see the, the four circles, the Venn diagram, four overlapping circles. Um, among the other components in it is what are you good at? What can you get paid for? Uh, how, how do you contribute to others and so on and so forth? So what you are good at is very crucial because you, you cannot contribute if or you cannot serve a purpose if you're not good at it. Number two, Loving what you do would help to ensure consistency and help you to, to sustain what you are doing. If you enjoy doing something, definitely you will have the tendency to carry on doing it. Because Ikigai requires you to go in for the long run and not just a quick sprint. So this is what we mean by contribution. So just now we had 
um, contribution and also impact. Now, this seems to be like, you know, you're doing something just for other people. What about me? What do I gain out of it? Now, this is your wins. Now, for your wins, keep it personal. It's, it's, it's for you to know. It's not meant to be shared. It's, it's for yourself. So your wins can be private. It can be something that you hold very closely, dearly to yourself. So now, uh, having these three elements, let's take a look at how to write an Ikigai statement. So very simple template that I have here is to do something that you are contributing. So that what? What kind of purpose, are, what kind of impact are you bringing in? So let me give you an example. My goal in terms of what I do, training, developing people, I want to make training accessible. You may have come across that tagline uh, if you've been following me, uh, to make training accessible so that other people can grow, I can give opportunity for others to develop themselves and by having that, everybody gains. So my Ikigai statement is to make training accessible so that people around me, uh, people that I have encountered with, can improve, can lead a better life. So that's my Ikigai statement. What about my wins? Definitely as a business uh, owner, somebody doing business in this field, there is that element of personal gain. Uh, the income that I generate, that is for myself. I don't need to go out there and declare, I'm targeting 1 million this year by uh, doing training to do this and whatnot. So I don't have to share that. that that's, that's not something that I would want to, to, to highlight. You know? But my mission is very clear. By doing what I want to do in terms of my Ikigai statement, the money will follow. And that is uh, basically uh, putting the focus in the right place. I'm not here to focus on the money and hope to get this going. But the idea is I focus on this and by default, by, by means of side effect, I believe that the money will, will follow suit. So let's take a look at the third component. You need to have a plan. The question is to achieve your Ikigai statement, what are your action? Make sure that your action reflects the, the Ikigai statement. Let's say, for example, you're heading up north, but you're moving your car towards the direction of south. So that action does not reflect your, your goals. Um, so be mindful of your action. Make sure it's aligned. Ask yourself how frequent is, is this going to happen? Let's say what kind of actions that you're taking. How frequent? Is it something that you're going to do daily? You're going to do weekly? monthly, quarterly, uh, half yearly, or every couple of years, doesn't matter. But you must know how frequent are you taking action, heading towards, closer towards your, your goals. And the third one is how can you be accountable for it? Now, if you keep your Ikigai statement to yourself, nobody would know. But if you declare or you at least have some conversation about it to other people, other people can be that check and balance. They will ask you, now, the, whether they ask you to find fault or whether they ask you to, to see if you fail or not, that is secondary, but at least they ask. When they ask, you would have that check and balance. Now, from there, if they ask and you cannot answer uh, how you are progressing, then you know that maybe your Ikigai is just, you know, like, like any other typical New Year's resolution, it's just uh, for purpose of being there. So you don't have uh, conviction over it. So that's the idea. So now, now that we know you need to have passion, passion, purpose, and plan all are intertwined and interrelated. So that should, inshallah, will help you or your vehicle to move. And most importantly, for 2023, if you have this in mind, inshallah, you'll be fine. So with that, I wish you all the best and may you find your own Ikigai. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Stay safe.